Here we are in the spring of 1355, the third year of this playthrough, and there is a new sense of dread hanging over the heads of all my people who call the marsh and the god-awful wall base their home. Drowning. Since the last video, Going Medieval has received an update which now allows people and animals to drown. How does this mechanic work? I don't know. But now everyone has a new fear about being the first to find out. Who's it gonna be? Aside from that, I have two main goals I want to take care of first during this year. One is setting up a pickling operation before summer so I don't lose as many mushrooms to the rottening as I did last year. And the other is to work some redesigns into the slaying chamber that serves as the entry to my base and hopefully improve its ability to slay. But both of those expansions will require iron ingots a resource which I cannot produce myself as the marsh seems devoid of any iron ore. However, I do have about 50 iron ingots on hand that I obtained by melting down all the gear from the previous invaders. But before we get too far into that, an interesting development has come to the forefront. Johama has been hitting the books and has learned about the beekeeping research tech. And since I'm adding an extra challenge to this playthrough by not building a meta underground refrigerated storage, this presents a dilemma. Barley was the first superfood for this challenge which largely ignores the effects of heat and will almost never rot. Well, honey is the second. And since I'm adhering to a hunter-gatherer lifestyle that isn't planting any crops, I'm limited to the amount of barley I can have based on what I can find growing in the wild. But sweet, sweet honey doesn't currently have any wild spawn mechanic, so I'm left having to build skeps if I want any of that sweet, sweet honey. There is nothing game mechanics wise that's preventing me from just building a massive honey conglomerate and living on nothing but the sweet vomit of bees for my entire existence, thus totally negating the challenge of having to deal with excessive food rot. But I didn't set up a challenge just to cheese it. So what do I do? Do I totally ignore honey like it doesn't even exist? That's an option. Or do I limit myself to a small number of skeps? But if I do that, how many am I allowed? I've thought about this for a while and have reached what I hope is a sensible solution. Now, I'm no beeologist, but I assume that historically, bees just didn't figure out how to make honey when humans first built them little homes. So let's just play pretend for a moment and let's pretend that instead of being a man-made skeps, these are actually wild beehives. Wild beehives that will spawn around the map for me. But how do I decide where they can spawn? Well, allow me to introduce you to bees.exe. Bees.exe is a small application I wrote that will determine the amount of honey I can have through a series of challenging random number checks. Once executed, bees.exe will first determine how many potential hives can spawn. This number is anywhere from one to the max number of settlers I have. Then, a second layer of random number generation. For every hive that it allows to spawn, it then spits out this list of numbers. The first two sets of numbers are the map coordinates where the spawn chance happens. And although I can build them on these mildly flooded tiles, they can't produce honey there. So the second round of RNG requires the hive landing on a dry tile, of which there aren't very many on my map. And then, the third act of random number generation is the number that follows the coordinates. Once constructed, this is how many production cycles I'm allowed to set. The chances of each number being chosen are heavily weighted towards the low end. So once per year, I'll allow myself to execute bees.exe. And every winter, I must destroy any hives that are still standing. I've ran bees.exe and pasted the results into this sign of a foot on it for an in-game reference. Now, let's see how bees.exe 1355 pans out. A miss. A miss. A hit. This is like the worst version of Medieval Bees Battleship. And one more miss. Oh, one hit at one production cycle. The RNG gods have blessed me with hardly any honey. <laughs> Rejoice. With the bees taken care of, I built a kitchen. And if I recall correctly, pickling works by passively occupying the workstation while the food pickles. So I jammed three stoves into the little room to increase my pickling throughput. 
Oh, and hells yeah, I could salt eels as well. And oh boy, I, I just remembered that I have almost no raw food outside of my barley. It is still very early spring as well, so there are zero forageables on the map at the moment. So you know what that means. Big fight! The burger with the big knockout blow with the hammer. With this boar plus this dead fox I found, we can eat again. Whoops! <laughs> Baldo Wolf didn't realize that barley was considered a vegetable, so it looks like he went and broke into my reserves and pickled a bunch of them. As yummy as pickled barley sounds, I have to put an end to that. Since Manic Pixie Greenskin Johama has the best charisma of the group, I made her her own chamber, complete with the cartography table she'll be needing to send out caravans to trade for anything we may need. Stone. On to improving the murder capacity of the entryway, I'll need to move my artisanal handcrafted hay for this, and also need to remove the shitty lightweight doors I've been using and replace them with some nice thick reinforced doors. Behold, the hall of the soon to be dead. I ran out of the iron ingots I had on hand, so in the meantime, the outer doors will still be flimsy doors, but they'll be upgraded in due time. But here's the plan, the invaders approach. Archers stick a few of them on the way in, and then when they are trying to beat down the door, I'll have a spear person on both sides poking them through these windows. Then, when, if they get through the outer door, my spear people will just move down the hall of the soon to be dead and keep poking them while they try to get through the inner doors. Foolproof, I swear! Except that I only have one entryway set up. And listen here, you min-maxers, out there wondering why I'd waste resources by making this hall double wide. It's called aesthetics, okay? And it also allows me to add a small zigzag pattern of traps that my people can navigate while going in and out of the base. I sent out my first caravan full of furniture to sell to a mountainous city in hopes of finding limestone or iron to trade for. But the people in that village hated me, so there was nothing to trade for. I realized my new kitchen space wasn't technically a kitchen, as the butchering table wasn't located inside it. Well, I decided to make it a double wide room that now houses the butchering table and the new brewing station I unlocked. Forty two honey from my bees.exe hive. What a treat! A new settler named Ostrom arrived, and although he was an Oki Bee, this colony is starting to turn into quite the sausage fest, so entry was denied. The second place my caravan visited was much more fruitful, yielding me 198 limestone blocks. Oh, come on! She is literally playing a game of backgammon solitaire! Some mountain bandits decided they wanted to test Slay Chamber 2.0. And of course they came for the side that wasn't finished yet. For the most part, the chamber worked as designed, as all the bandits got got. The stingers from behind the windows did their poking. Some of the bandits were smart enough to poke back though, and both John and the Burga got knocked out. I also don't have any armor outside of the helmets I've looted, so... Eh. Something else to work on for defense. Well, I left my barley enabled for yet another production type, and now I only have 14 barley left. Not even enough to make a single meal. But a bear arrived and attempted to test my defenses. So, mmm, more bear meat. With the ingots forged from melting down the gear from the last invaders, I was able to upgrade a set of the outer doors to be reinforced. You know what? This doesn't seem like it's OSHA approved. Is this how I get someone to drown? No. A new settler arrived, which just so happened right as I was clicking where the accept button was located. Thus, Deanna accidentally showed up being chased with pursuers in pursuit. But being a disgusting restitution church goer, I didn't want her. So I guess I can make the best of this situation by just having her do some hard labor for me for the next day and a half. And then, yeah, sure. Take her. See if we care. Aww, they like that.
I added a new room on the production wing to serve as an armory and start producing some actual armor for my gang, but whoops, gonna need more ingots. I didn't realize it at the time, but the thunderstorm that came through totally wiped out my stoves. My sweet stoves that cost iron ingots to build. <laughs> I also realized I haven't been paying attention to the canine population of the wall, which had exploded to nine dogs. I wanted to lower that number a bit as I don't need that many dogs around. And uh, would you judge me if I decided to slaughter them for food? Yeah, I thought so. So instead I sent Johama out on a caravan and successfully rehomed five dogs with some good oak brethren families on the other side of the map in exchange for 75 ingots and some mechanical components. I tapped out the clay deposit in the former waiting pool. Before I had bees.exe in my life, I probably would have hit these above ground deposits next, but not anymore. That would hurt my hive spawn chances. Instead, I'm gonna start working on this giant underwater reserve. Will I pull enough out to drain the entire map? Probably not. Trupec the cat died. And if you think I'm beyond eating that cat, then you would be wrong. Mmm, 11 kitty meats. I finally built out the backgammon platform into its final form, the Great Hall. But, 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 but what is that you're saying? A great hall requires a floor space of 50 tiles? And the 3 by 10 pods I'm building only have 30 floor space tiles? And I should just quit lying to you? Well, let me show you a little trick. To get the needed floor space, I just built another pod above it, and then when I boop out a single floor tile, voila, a great hall is born. I've given in on hoarding barley, and am now allowing it to go towards beer production and just had my first batch done in autumn. It is also shelf stable, so it seems an okay use of what I can harvest in the wild. Can. Looking at you, you giant patch of barley that I just can't reach as you're landlocked into the no build zone. <sighs> Once again, some raiders arrived. My people took up their places on the side of the wall that the attack was coming from. But oh no! The raiders pulled a fast one on them and went for the other side. Probably because I forgot to upgrade to the reinforced doors on that side. But alas, aside from John getting thumped again, the poke box slay cage did its job and seven more corpses were offered up to the watery grave. By the start of winter, I had about 180 odd pickled vegetables in reserves. It seems that the pickling gambit has worked. I definitely didn't experience the same amount of mushroom rot like I had in the previous year. <laughs> After nearly three years of trying, Baldwell finally trained the cattle out of it hanging around as a pet. Hooray for new friends! And speaking of new friends, a new runaway arrived, Eloise, with some stacked skills. She was also an Oki Bee and not another sausage, so I accepted her. The pursuers arrived and my people took up their positions once again. Except for John. John, why? Why are you outside? Oh my God, run away. <laughs> uh, and aside from John being a complete dingus, it went as expected. So much blood. So many corpses. And oh my god, the, the the big guy did it! He he left the compound to feel alive and is converted back to Oak Brethrenism! Yeah! Son of a bitch. After pulling at my heartstrings like that, I'm not gonna be sad if you bleed to death from your anus, John. <sighs> I realize that winter is nice and that it lets you easily see what paths people use to get to the base and into the marsh. So I took the opportunity to throw down some wood flooring along the paths for that little boost in movement speed. But aside from that, the rest of the winter was unremarkable. I pulled through with a reasonable amount of food in reserves and it really feels like my settlers are starting to pull ahead. So will bees.exe in 1356 help them out even more or cast a long shadow devoid of Honey, tune in next time to find out. Later. <laughs>